but their control in the lanes is very good with the Lich and the Ogre Magi. They just have to make sure, like, the support, the support Ogre Magi, which I cast in our, in our last game, uh, was just kind of a sad thing, primarily because the camp got blocked. So when the camp gets blocked, you sit there going, well, I can't pull. I can't find levels. I am never going to get my multicast up and running. Harassing in the lane did nothing because he was up against a centaur. In this game, you're up against a bat rider. So, in fact, having, uh, having your ignite is a lot more effective. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, you always have that question, too. It's just like, why do we always have a pause? Always. Always it happens. All right, into the game we go. Heading up towards the top lane, Alliance. Let's just run through our roster. We'll have Loda in the role as the Lashrak. Misery with the Ogre Magi. We'll have Jesse as the Death Prophet. That puts RK into the role as the Lich. And then Admiral Borlog, the final one, as the Timbersaw. Eternal Levy, Nagasar, and Pilot Eye on the Alchemist. We'll have Fader on the Razor. And then Aoi 2000 as the VS, followed by Bone 7's uh, uh, Batrider. That is uh, <laughs> rolling up the lineups as Misery. They're trying to wait for someone to come put an aggro ward down. Now, let's look at the Dire Vision. They'll see everybody moving up. The question is, though, Misery? He's trying to get himself... Actually, he's in range for a stun. But the second he does, Cloud9 are going to try and turn and counter-initiate in on them. So they just move up. I'm going to destroy a tree. We've got matter. observers and sentries behind. In fact, one sentry's already been passed over and left with Admiral Bulldog. And they'll block up the camp. So there's no pull point up on the top lane, at least for the first part, unless they de-ward it out. Uh, Observer Warp for the top runes. And now heading down south, we are actually splitting ourselves up. RK will move towards the top lane. This would be an obvious kind of thing anyway for a sacrifice. He could have given the advantage towards Chessie in the middle lane, but he's going to give it to Admiral Bulldog instead, and he's just going to do the block. Allowing Admiral Bulldog to try and find these runes, and he actually gets a bounty rune. A really nice rune for a Timbersaw early on. Because finding that second torment. level is like your most critical thing. Having reactive armor, plus either Whirling Death and Timber Chain. Like, you, your main thing you're searching for is obviously level 3. But giving bonus gold to him, and then you've got like a sacrificing Lich. It also gives you a bonus on top of by having uh, either Frost Armor, or just having the Lich doing Frost Blasting Harassment. Kind of mean it, like, I, I've spent a lot of time talking to Capitalist about Timbersaw because he's one of his favorite heroes in the game. But it's also one of these heroes that uh, it struggles up against burst damage early on because you can't get your reactive armor Not charges up really you. early. So what you're capable of getting is having frost armor from Arke, which kind of changes the way this lane works. Admiral Bulldog doing a really good job of keeping that aggro down. Dragging the creep wave. Doesn't want to drag it all the way down. Arke sacrifices one creep, and then they throttle the wave quite nicely. So middle lane battle is going to be also an int a, a fun one. So, Mishio Fetar. He'll be farming over on over on his side. Uh, trying to stay on top of the CS up against a Death Prophet. When Nolly Null Talos went, they both got their own own ways of like getting quick farm, either through the Crypt Swarm or through the Plasma Field. Even though Plasma Field was reworked slightly, it's not as bad. Misery, Mr. Boots first up against Bone 7. Well, you have to Firefly. He had to do that anyway to try and contest this pull, but then the Centaur War stomps him. That blast is still available for him, but Misery won't want to waste that mana. Right, so Admiral Bulldog does have his reactive armor up now. He's a little bit more regeneration than this, and uh, where's our Lich ended up walking? He's still up on top lane. So RK now up to level 2. And they're coming over for the rune control. It's such a critical thing now. You've got to contest it every single time. Bone 7's using the pit. For Invis and Misery. Well, he came in rather close just then and sits right on top of the rune. Nice gold experience for him, and uh, Timbersaw will take the DD rune. One little swipe and a pilot eye. The Frost Blast will slow him down enough. You get a Whirling Death and the extra attack. But they're going to back up before that stun. Yeah, it goes to Admiral Bulldog. Oh, he was rotating over to help out. But it's just easy chip damage into the, into the Alchemist. He's only got one Tango left anyway. Lotus having a fantastic time farming up in the bot lane. Split Earth and two points up in Lightning. We got Bone 7 looking for, well, I was going to say Ancient Stacking, but not happening in this game. I mean, he's not stopping Lotus Farm at all. Interesting to see, too, what uh, build Lotus is going to go for. You could go for early Metcar stuff. Oh, actually, Bone 7 is going to be really careful about this. Like, they could have actually slowed him down, while Chessie probably also should be rather careful about that middle lane. If Bone 7 overstayed his welcome, 
And Loader moved up with high points up in Lightning. The burst damage could have been enough just to take out the Batrider. So I have to be cautious about these kind of things. The Tango Chair is not really enough. He needs the bottle for Chessie. He needs to get the runes! <laughs> Blast the field. Fader couldn't get in range for another attack. 62 life points on him anyway. It wouldn't have been enough for with just one. Fader needed two attacks then to make it work. And Chessie is not having himself a fun time in mid lane. By the time he sends his bottle back, he's going to use all the charges. He puts the bottle... <laughs> okay, missing on the micro here. And that could actually punish him. Because he needs the ball to go all the way back and then come back out again. So then at 40, uh, 4 minutes in, he can get one of the runes. This is essential for Chessie to try and stay alive in this mid lane. If not, Fader is just going to dominate him. His bottle's already on the way back. He'll be arriving at the right time. Yeah, Chessie's not going to make this. The Kuri doesn't have, have high movement speed. So I won't get there in time. So Bone 7 will control the bottom rune with this Bat Rider. Well, as he continues to farm these pull points. Misery doesn't want to let him have it though. It's coming all the way up. If he L5 blasts here, he, he wants to do it so then he can take the rune that's going to be here. And he does take the bounty rune, then ignites up on Bone 7 and Bone 7. He's going to walk in the pit. This could should be our first blood into the pit. He's going to try to deny himself to Roshan. Not going to happen. Ogre Mizai. It's going to go up to level three and a half with that kill. That is a, that's a balls up right now from the offlaner of Cloud9. And Misery instantly celebrates by picking up Arcane Boots. Allowing him to spam a crap ton more and also going to help Loader out in this lane. Because Loader now doesn't have to go Arcane. So if he wants to, he can go Phase Boots and go for more of a like a damage cut style build for Lashrak and more positioning. And what's his choice? He actually goes Strength Threads. So that's more of a, of a tanky fighter. And they'll look to add a little bit of pressure to this bottom lane. It's almost a... Well, it's going to be a level 6 for Shrak. Surely. His farm's looking good. Net worth's looking fantastic. Raids are still winning out against Krob in mid, though. 26-14 up against a 14-1. Fader most definitely has the control of the CS. And the Death Prophet sitting half a level below level 6. It's not where he wants to be a full level behind that of the Razor. This is not Chessie's game right now. Well, Arke still continues to throw that top lane. Admiral Bulldog almost at his Arcane Boots as well. Interesting to see the build that can come up from the Timbersaw. Because with a new Crimson Guard, it might be an option for him. I don't know if that's really the path he wants to head. That's now. I'll eternal envy. Get a Riptide. Concoction's on the way. Admiral Bulldog just trying to stay hidden for the moment. The Aspray will come in. He does actually hide it perfectly. Bulldog jukes around the tree line. The self stun, sealing the death of poor little Pylite Eye. He got greedy for it, but they lost the vision. Admiral Bulldog able to cut his way into the tree line to a point where they just could not see him. And now it's the second kill for Alliance with no rebuttal from Cloud9. And now they're even losing the runes. A double damage rune for Lich and a bounty rune for the Ogre Magi. And now it celebrates by buying some new fresh Observer Wards. We're six minutes in, so it is time to refresh the vision. While down on bottom lane, Loader continues to also get free space and free farm. Because no one's there to form him. The, the Batrider... Bone 7 can't be anywhere near this. He needs to go to his own jungle and flash farm this. But at the same time, what do we got? We don't have... Well, we have no stacks. No stacks at all. Concoction stun, Admiral Bulldog. He's gonna be in trouble. Magic Missile, then and I can follow it up. And Admiral Bulldog now will give away his advantage. He wants to timber chain away. Large amount of damage. He needs to regenerate a little bit quicker with the eight reactive armor charges helping him out. Misery will now also arrive up in the top lane and what, what looked like certain death turns into now a turnaround because both Pilot Eye as well as Owie are too low to really stand here and fight. They see Misery, especially when a catapult starts attacking him. <laughs> they drop a sentry wall going, how the hell are we visible? And there it is. The old wards would have never have seen that. Talking about the old sentry wards who had insanely restricted vision. So now we turn into a tri lane up on top. Admiral Bulldog giving everybody the mana they require to keep fighting up here. They've actually got double arcane brute sets. Misery. Give it just any kind of harassment. That wasn't even meant for the blast. It was meant for the ignite. To slow down and just burn away the life points of that of that Naga. Again, the bat rise force off the bottom lane. Bones Evans has got no items. Like, you'll pick up his bottle, but you're going up against Loader with, like, a, a 2 one, three, one built. He's got so much farm on the back of him. Looks like Pardai's in trouble. There's your blast. He's already been ignited up. 
And the Lich with the level 2 Frost Blast to get the kill now. They get a, they get a slow him down. Over. There's a magic missile stun. But what else have they got? They got Faded with the Eye of the Storm. No mana for a Plasma Field. He'll get one kill over on the Lich. The Ensnare will go to Misery. And Admiral Bulldog, uh, he shark him's a little bit too late to really intimidate anybody. And Chessy, he was considering moving up to help out, triggering the Exism, but held on to both of them at the end of the day. And you're seeing Admiral Bulldog, that Soul Ring is coming out. Of course now, we rework this kind of stuff. So when you get that Soul Ring, you can build it into a Bloodstone. The new, uh, the new chain off item. The Crimson Guard, of course, is with more with the Vanguard and the Buckler. So I was thinking maybe the Buckler could have been a choice if he wanted to amplify his armor up to a point where no physical DPS would really come through when he also combined it up with the Frost Armor. That didn't happen. Phone 7 with a Haste Troon. One of the best runes you can get. Especially while his fire Firefly is up. Lotus going to come in. Oh, that's a lot of damage already. And he triggers the Haste Troon, so Misery won't be able to get himself in range in time. But now it's 3-2, to two, 9 minutes in. The advantage still going the way of Alliance by about two two and a half k, three thousand moving up for for uh, for Alliance as well as far as the experience. And Loda, are you are you actually going to go into a minus after building treads? Drums would be the choice I thought he would go for for this kind of game. Admiral Bulldog, boy. I know your reactive armor charges are great for regeneration, which is why Soul Ring can also work so well. So efficient on the mana. But it also makes it so you drop down right at the low, so you be careful about the follow-up stuns. So Loda now with 1900 gold. If he's going to get minus, he would have already picked it up. Middle lane, Fader, stunned up. Owie, he can't help up. He just slows, uh, slows up Chessy. But Chessy now comes up. He needs to get... Oh, he never got the Crypt Swarm off! The great turnaround stun from Pylai Dai. Catches Alliance. They dig it up on the high ground, but they were caught flat-footed. And now he's searching for a kill over on Arke. He's not going to get it though. And Alliance do lose out rather Dyer's heavily for that one. The experience change up by almost 1800 from Radiant's just that fight. Lotus going to back up. Beta, just an easy bounty rune. There's a DD rune as well on the bottom river. You might be able to pick up both because no one's. Uh, you got Lotus coming down for it. He might want to try and deny it. He's trying to get past the creepway before he can do that. He'll see it. Yep, there you go. Denied up right in front of the hands of Bone 7. Loader. Actually, is he blocked? He was similarly blocked then. The wave of terror comes out and the creep wave moves over with him now. He triggered his stick charge to try and stay alive. As Bone 7, no Firefly available. And they should know this. Misery. There's your stun. The ignite to follow up. Just trying to slow him down. The lightning bounce using the centaur so he was able to reach in time without having to have the little shrike walk all the way over. And Bone 7 getting called out of position. And it all started with that attempt to get the rune. And loaded now up to 2.4k gold on this Lashrak. Is he trying to get a straight BKB or something? Or... Because if you're going to go drums, you still at least buy up certain parts of it. So you had your, you had your advantage already. But... Just doesn't seem to be happening. <laughs> He just holds his cash. 2.4k. Last time I saw this was a terrible going for Radiance. Alright, Misery. Enjoying his farming time. They're trying to just power level him up a little bit more. Running around with that ogre with uh, with the multicast. He knows he's kind of safe down here with the with the uh, arcane boots. The second you have the Batrider arrive, he'll just spam on him. And I like to, we have the Orb of Venom, Ogre Majai. That's what it should be. The way it should be. As well, on, on bottom lane, the track. That's a quick pulse, no, but he can edict down the tab, that tower. Up to three points up at it now. And there's no fortification available. Pilot I will come in for an acid spray, but there's no creep wave, so the edict damage is still 100% into that tower. So a lot of more money going his way, and it's going to be a bloodstone. It's a soul ring and point booster. So it's just going to be the... Uh, yeah, the new Bloodstone for both heroes, both the Timbersaw as well as the Lashrag. And now Pylite Die, the first stun, Loader with the follow-up stun. They've already got the Frost Blast and then the Pulse Nerve from Loader. There's a triple TP in coming to fight this. The RK Boost Misery trigger. Trigger so everyone's got the mana. They can even turn onto Owie if they wanted to. There's a lot of damage available. The Misery will TP out. And Loader and RK, they've got the movement speed over on, over on the VS. So they're away to safety. 
The Alchemist dies, they force three TPs, and the Tier 1 tower goes down. Cloud9 are being forced around this lane. Unwillingly. Now, Bone 7, Admiral Bulldog. Just a quick Chakram. Whoa! Oh, more than a quick Chakram. That's a quick death for the Batrider. Bone 7 just walked in there and, uh, well, took a moment to take in the Serenity. And now we instantly knew that they knew what was coming. They just couldn't attack him in time. Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal. Now they give the levels to RK. So, Frost Nova. Now gonna be added in. Or oh, Chain Frost, sorry, what's it Frost Nova? Frost Blast and Chain Frost. Now up and running for the Lich. Still no Frost Armor coming up from him. Uh, still taking some time. As how he's just trying to stay alive on these front lines. A tranquil, set of tranquil boots for him. Before Magic One could even be anywhere near completed. Admiral Bulldog still free farming this off plane. And I got a funny feeling Admiral Bulldog wants to get it just so he can display it. These are. Uh, if potentially the Agadim Scepter. That's, that's one way he could go about this. Like he's, he's just got the, the, the Soul Ring for now. If he goes for the Aghanim Scepter, having the double Chakrams available, that's going to be a beautiful thing. And with the track, you can force the towers. Not to mention the uh, the Death Prophet. I haven't even talked the about her. She's got a level attack. 2 Exorcism, but I haven't heard it being triggered once. Just been farming up in middle lane, man. A level, a level 11 Death Prophet. Just chilling and waiting for everyone to disappear. Well, the top lane gets forced out. Cloud9 will have to come to defend. There is fortification available right now. The Yule Scepter is already up as well for Death Prophet 14 minutes into the game. Watching Fate of Walking underneath that Observer Ward. But the Alliance aren't giving up on this. At the same time, Envy does the right decision. He can't farm up on the top lane. He still needs to get the Radiance before he can force any kind of pressure into the Alliance lineup. So what do you do? You let your, your creeps, your, your illusions do most of the work on the bottom lane. Force out the tower. Get as much farm as you possibly can. And just keep pushing. Radiance Get to your 3800. Now the top lane's gonna be forced out. Admiral Bulldog, the Chakram, pretty point blank range. Pied Eye gonna get the stun here. She uses it or not to RK. So the follow up stun can be there with a Firefly. They will get a tip for tat kill on the supports, but Loader, too much damage and Naga. Stops the fun. Loader, he's still burning at his mana while this is going on. Owie, low life, and there's Chessie Dolphin, but he's not, he's still gonna go down. He got controlled by the lasso. And now Lode is also going to take a fall on this top lane, giving a double kill over to Fader. Admiral Bulldog and Misery, they've got to bail out of here. They can't bring down the tower, no matter how much they want to try for it. And for all of that, who really does come up on top is most definitely Cloud9. Even though Alliance did more damage, Cloud9 are the ones that get the bigger change to the experience as well as gold. A big injection into that Batrider, heavily needed. And not to mention the Razor with his double kill. Looking good. Radiance middle tower is under and attack. BKB has arrived for Fader. Dyer's top tower is under attack. He's able to tank up a lot more during these engagements. No longer will the, will the control of the Ogre Mishai be a primary problem for him. Not to mention most of the damage coming out from Alliance is still magical. These PKBs are actually really critical for Cloud9 to have, not to mention Point 7 having a Blink Dagger. Second critical thing. And Chessie, like, it, it was a weird move from him. He came in behind the line, the Naga Sleep allowed him to isolate him. And there's a simple line, so he's going to Yule Scepter over on Fader. The Shrike had the follow up stun, but Fader is already quite tanky enough that he can tank this. In fact, there goes your PKB. Doesn't care about the Pulse Nova, the Plasma Field damage, and the attack with the 84 bonus stolen damage is enough to kill off Loida. So for all that farming he had, he ends up giving over a lot of gold and a lot of experience the way, because there was also a solo kill coming in for Fader. You can see it right attack. there, he actually gained. Radiance okay, that's plus my damage done. But up in gold, but up in 1200 points of experience for just that one kill he had. The VIP boost is now being picked up by Loader. So he's trying to get closer and closer to having that Bloodstone up and running. Well, Tippersaw does own his now. But these critical timings to the Bloodstones, it means Alliance can't be throwing away their lives again. And Chessie, now we finally see this Exorcism doing some work on a tower. The top tower went down by the Lashrak. The bottom tower went down basically by the Lashrak. And this Death Prophet, 
Took 12 minutes before the effect is really felt onto any of the talents from Cloud9. Now there's no fortification here from C9. So they do have to give up these tier 1 towers. I reckon they'll be they'll be still content with this. They know that their potential is coming in towards the mid game. When the magical damage of Alliance starts to really tail off, because the immunity starts to kick up for Cloud9. That's what they should be searching for. And you got Fader now with the a plate mail as well. They're just racking up the armor. Racking up the life points. Pilot Eye. Well, he's even up to level 7. But he's got a medallion of courage. So this will flag the fact that we'll be looking at a... Uh, on Roshan sometime soon. You do have the Bat Rider. And with the new design of the pit, with these big ledges around here, the Bat Rider is so much room to work with. Because he can also trap heroes up. Even up on this top ledge. You just lasso and drag one up. Drag them to the other side here, and they're going to walk all the way around before they can get back inside the pit. Um, that's a that's a huge ass problem. Actually, it's probably no, it's not even bad to go up because if you follow this path north, you're walking up this direction, and then you got to loop yourself around before then you're capable of actually heading down south, over this way, and then into the pit. Which way is quicker now? <laughs> Straight through the river is the best way. Alright, so Admiral Baldon now up to 2,000 gold on him. Need a bigger mana pool if he's going to run a double Chakram. At 2,200. Potentially, well, in the past we've seen a couple of Timber Swords play around with Blink Daggers as well. Because it's just a, plick, a quick Blink in, so you have to get your Whirling Death off and then Timber Chain away. So you get all your burst damage 100% inflicted into the heroes. That's kind of like the goal of doing such a thing. Hardai makes the right choice. TP's himself all the way back to base. The rest of his team is still pushing out. The Eternal Envy's getting close to finishing up that Radiance now. Latrak now has his own Bloodstone done, so it took a while, but 20 minutes in, the Bloodstone is there. And here's actually going to be that Blink Dagger over on the Timbersaw. So Admiral Bulldog wants to be a little bit more up in your face aggressive. Chase down these heroes like Vengeful Spirit, for example. They're very easy kills. Especially if Arke can give you buff ups all the time. Chessy also. Mass farming for him up to uh, 2.8k gold now. A very large choice of what she can go, but in this game, even with the, the Ice Armor buff up, you probably should be looking at getting the Shiva's Guard available for, uh, for the Death Prophet. It'll attempt to force the bottom lane out. You've already got the blood lost up. So attack speed and movement speed increase. But you've got now also Radiance and... Uh, okay, they can force this fortification's down. The Creep Wave's there. But with Asus spray all over the top of the Lions, yeah, they're trying to move a little bit further out to the side. They do have an aggressive observer ward down, so they can see who's coming in through that through that side tree line. Well, they won't see the Nagasari. And in fact, Envy, if he actually sleeps attack. right now, he'll catch all five in a pool, a perfect position. Fader will move up. The Atza Spray and Concoction. Start prepping part eye that Concoction. is coming in, looking for the stun. Loader backing up as quick as he possibly can, but there's no BKB protection, so Fader mops him up with that Eye of the Storm. Finds Admiral Bullock on the sideline, but Chessy dying up to Tier 2 Tower. C9 still losing no one. Eternal Envy is safe behind the tower. TPing out. No, he won't. The Ogre Majai will actually get the kill. He was able to ignite him, which is why the tick out on Envy was able to work. They're still two for the price of one, and they defend the tower. The advantage, however, still going heavily in favor of Cloud9. Because the Naga Siren died a long way away from, uh, well, anybody. So it didn't give any experience for that. And the advantage was already in favor of Alliance. Which is why a 2-1 trade-off up against a team who already had an advantage is such a big, a big height for them. And they're going to go in for Roshan. Medallion and Acid Spray, so negative 14 armor with the Wave of Terror as well. Into Roshan, trying to fight through him. Faye's got 12 one charge, but he's also got the Regeneration Ring. So he'll trigger that little sucker and then go back in and tank it up for his team. But they've lost all that massive negative armor. They're still there. That should take some time as Admiral Bulldog. Well, he called one of them out. Oh, this could actually be a massive disaster. Fader triggers BKB in the static link. Admiral Bulldog has to chain himself away, but the link remains. 
he's still losing a large portion of damage, giving it over to Fader. Schmitz, he can return that. Owie running himself off to the side. There's no way out of this. The silence of the Fader. Two heroes down now. Alliance kicked back. Roshan at 1,500 life points. The lightning damage, and now I think uh, Bone7's realizing he's brought down enough trees so the Timber Chain cannot connect. And he's realizing that, that Observer Ward is already up. They get rid of the Naga Illusions and get back in there to bring down Roshan. Now the advantage, the full experience, some Roshan single change up. Going the way of Cloud9, and Roshan goes the way of Alliance too. A big comeback for them in that engagement. They came back very, very quickly to fight that. And Cloud9 maybe a little bit greedy. Dyer's thinking they could take Roshan as well denied. there. They were definitely quick. Like that negative armor dropped him down quickly, but they couldn't finish the job. They just didn't have enough. And when you when you lose your alchemist that quickly with the jump in from, from the Timbersaw. Not to mention, all those fights happened after the Bloodstones were picked up. Now, Latrak did use his. So that was the denial one before, but you have... You still actually had the 10 charges coming up on, onto, onto the Timbersaw. So with these charges increasing, you're seeing the point booster. Yeah, it's coming, boys and girls. It's coming. You know it. Huge the farm up on the top lane too with a, uh, a nice creep wave and a half for him to farm. Getting closer and closer to having the, uh, the Aghanim Scepter build for the Timbersaw. First time I'll ever get to cast it. The first time I think I've actually seen it in any competitive game. Obviously, it's only been out for like two days, <laughs> possibly three. And Admiral Bulldog gets to be the first man I cast do it at least. First man I cast that does it at least. English, please, grammar, don't destroy the language. Owie's having some fun on the bottom lane. He's a long way down here. That's why he's keeping himself secret in the tree line. The Radiant Creep Wave. He's actually too far away to get experience here, but he can't go any closer or he becomes visible. And then the potential for like a blinking Timbersaur is just too high for him. They do have a Observer Ward here in the middle lane, so that's watching a lot of the movements of Cloud9. And Loader will come down and mop up the bottom lane. So he's got four staff to go now with that, uh, with that Bloodstone. Still thought he had looked towards the BKB, but guess not. That's now Chessy being buffed up. Mystery still primary job. He's got two points now up in that multicast. That could be massive problems if he if he gets some good RNG. Especially with now Batrider not going in for a BKB, but going for a Mask of Madness. So Bone 7 sacrificing like survivability for movement speed drag. And it might be really effective too, but at the same time, if he gets caught out and drops very quickly, there goes your initiation from Cloud9. Unless they want to start using Naga Sleep for that kind of stuff. But you use the Exorcism now to bring down the tier 2 tower. The Acid Spray is trying to keep him out, but that's still a high level Exorcism. So the tower will drop, not to mention the Edict damage to start with too. And Batrider, jump in, he wants to drag back out, but Misery got the stun. Bones is still trying to pull him back far, far away. The Aegis will be triggered. And Bones 7 is away to safety. But it's still the same thing, the towers go down. The bottom lane, Owie is <laughs> solo forcing a tier 2 tower. <laughs> Alright. I think Envy's hoping for a courier kill here, but he never really found it. Now we actually look after that. Yeah, <laughs> one death of a, of a prophet, but that was all. Because it was Nagus Demon 2, it's no real effect on anything. And a smoke movement coming out from Alliance. So they want to try and punish up on this top lane. They're still missing a hero, however, because Owie, Chessy is currently battling him. It's your set of revival. The Sans trying to stop him from doing that. The magic missile stun. And uh, while Chessy, able to win the one on one fight, while the Batrider goes down the top lane. And Admiral Bulldog, just a quick chain up, and Naga pops asleep. So there's no follow up. The ignites on Pylite die. But he'll trigger the chemical rage, giving the light points back. But Admiral Bulldog, the shark, I'm really slowing him down. With the lightning damage from Loader, a little bit of pulse Nova. But the Whirling gets a Timber Chain, they get the kill, and now they find Pardai in the tree lines too. And that is now going to be full heroes down for Cloud9. 16-11. The tier 2 tower to also take a fall. And with that, Admiral Bulldog will be able to afford the Aghanim Scepter.
Bring the double wheel of death. It's sore, but a lot better for Movie. Well, they might come high ground too. Even an Agadim set to be built up for the Ogre Mishai. Any damage attack. will be used. So they'll try and just do chip damage and force a reaction. The Fader will be at Shiva's guard over on that Razor. Chasing after Loader. The Chakram is down, but with the BKB from Fader, he wants to keep going. The Batrider, blink up. He's got four stuff available. He finds Admiral Bulldog. Drags him back with Bulldog. He needs those armor charges. It's not going to be there. He just commits suicide. He already picked up his Aghanim Scepter and with all the charges he had, he goes down to eight charges now after sacrificing himself. And comes up. Come on, charm off, Bulldog. Charm off. The blue and the red. It's the bye you go. There's an app year at fall. Trees, beware. Admiral Bulldog is on the field. And he will not rest until every Greenpeace member sheds a tear. Well, Chessie now finishes up beside the vice, so they've managed to find themselves a nice to table. Now he's the nearest target he could go for. I don't know if he really wants to try and do this solo. He doesn't know what else is around him. Actually, yes, he does. <laughs> Admiral Bulldog jumps in and lets the wheels of death go. Poor Owie 2000. All he wanted to do was find his level. Actually, he got his level 2 swap. So he has that. Beta, be careful, man. The BKB doesn't protect you anymore. And if the side device comes in first, then the follow-up stuns which can arrive from Alliance are quick. As long as Misery is in the neighborhood. Total Envy still keeps believing in split push for this Naga Siren. Sitting around 12,000 net worth, Radiant there's still another four players above him, and that actually includes the Razor. But the other three belong to Alliance. So he needs to make sure he controls up the Radiant Jungle all the time. Keep the farm coming, keep the pressure on the Tier 2 towers, and stop Alliance from just hunting them all the time. But that means they need to get rid of these Observer Wards. There's already two aggressive Observer Wards down, watching any kind of movement out from C9. So they'll group up inside their base and smoke up. And come out and see if they can find Alliance. And you still got Tibisaur farming up in the mid, so he's, he's the most obvious target. But because of that, you kind of also realize it's going to be a trap. They throw down their own Observer Wards. Inside of smoke means Alliance won't instantly know where that thing is, so they won't de-ward it straight away. And now Ali will be de-warding out the Observer Ward, and he breaks smoke to do so. But the smoke was wearing off and they found no openings anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And the Timber Saw, well, buys up a gem. He's got 2k life points and really good regeneration, so why not? But defense towards that top lane, Okamashai is moving up. Now it's going to be the tier 1 tower dropping. No fortification to save it. Bones is still just waiting. But he's gone through most of his Firefly duration just sitting here. So it blinks up four staffs away, but there's no reaction to come. There's no one from Cloud9 was ready to jump on that, and Alliance didn't really want to have a bar of it either. Right, they start to lose vision inside the Diocide jungle, so they have to be a little bit more careful about where they're moving. They still have to be really careful about this Naga Siren. She's still free farming the bottom lanes. The creeps are down there farming that up, then taking out the camps with the other sets. It's just easy money being pummeled into Eternal Envy. And with the Manda style as well as having the Radiance already up. I know you're not looking that great, but then again, you just hit top net worth. Everyone's just so close on this board. Overall, the advantage is still going the way of the Alliance. The red gold and experience. Bottom tower is under attack. It only takes one horrendous fight for Cloud9 to turn it around. And the Naga again is <laughs> intercepting creep waves wherever he can. And then in the pressure was the late bone. Never got TP out. Misery couldn't get there in time. Attack. Need to actually four staff through the tree line to find him. Gold. And she did in a way, but not in the right area. Roshan spawns up in just over tower. a minute. He's under attack. Like the illusion of Admiral Bulldog will sit there and scout it out. And then she... Yeah, he'll survive long enough to, to reveal the fact that Roshan is up. So he's just got to leave it there for a while. There it is, 51 seconds until Roshan's up. Radiance and that illusion's got a little bit longer than that alive. I don't know if Alliance can really go for it. Because you're still up against a Bat Rider and a Naga, and a Naga Sleep. Radiant and you don't have your own controls. That BKB is coming up for the track, but it's not there yet. Timbersaw kind of needs to get one of his own, but Admiral Bulldog right now is going for more of a, well, a tanky regeneration style build. 
But they definitely need quicker ways to get rid of these Naga Illusions, which they do not own. Even with that Lightning Impulse, it's a lot of bad to try and burn to get rid of just a couple of Illusions. Alright, Roshan. Moments away now. So Admiral Bulldog will learn this instantly, or at least all of Alliance will learn this instantly. But Cloud9 won't, so yep, the big man is up. Same time the Illusion's gonna go down. There's no pings coming out, but they're definitely moving over towards Roshan. Alliance is still getting pressured from all sides. The top lane is getting pressured by the Bat Rider. That's the reason why he was back behind that tier 2 tower before. The mid lane just keeps getting pushed in by Fader. And then this off lane is Aoi and Envy. Gonna mop up as much of it as possible. And now you can get BTs over on, over on the Naga Siren. So the split push power is getting better. And they're gonna smoke in and probably walk into Roshan with this. Admiral Bulldog, Admiral Bulldog can't join them, but he can hover around just to wait. So, level 3 Exorcism will be used. And oh man, they do a lot of damage with that. <laughs> they do a hell of a lot of damage with that. Because it wasn't only that, but it was also the Medallion of Courage helping him out. A very quick Roshan going the way of Alliance. And now Misery. He found an opening. Triple multicast, triple multicast. But then Mana Style, he breaks free of the, ign of the Ignite. You're gonna need a lot more mana regeneration, Admiral Bulldog. A lot, lot more. Orange 7 has been so defensive on the sidelines. They didn't know how many people went in there to do Roshan. There was no warning from Cloud9 looking for it. Because with the smoke, they wouldn't have seen him go in anyway. Bat Rider. Staring down at Bulldog. If he can get the like the last two on him, then Fader would have gone straight to the static link. Now Timber Chain too short from Admiral Bulldog. He'll have Blink Dagger in five seconds time. Chains up and caught up to Pile of Die. First shark from second shark from you see the first damage that comes out from that. With a quick chain over. Admiral Bulldog now sitting at a he's actually at a five kill streak. Even though it says five for one. There's still a five kill streak for him. Because one of those was a denial. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. How's Misery doing? That's actually uh, his staff of Whispery coming in. It's getting closer towards his own Ags. But it's the BKB for Chessy. After Hex, Yule Scepter up. Arcade's coming in too. The four star being used by Aoi to get Bone 7 away to safety. And they're just looking for someone to kill, but they can't catch up to him. Cloud9 scattering to the winds. Envy still keeps his bottom push going. The tier 2 tower is already down now. With another 2.6k gold on him. He'll want to BT himself up to the top lane in a moment. After he realizes that Alliance will come down to the bottom lane to defend, that's when he has Radiant's to go up. Bottom tower is under attack. So I'll turn a Envy into the tree line. Waiting this out. Oh, it's, just, it's classic. It's, can I say classic Envy? So Cloud9, there it is. The TP up to top lane. They want the T2 tower down. It's just split push control. And Alliance can't let this happen. Like, if, they, they, if they keep letting this happen for any longer, it's... They need to get high ground. They might have to do it as a sacrifice. Like lose a tier 2 and a tier 3 tower for it. But if they get a Rax in return, then it's worth it. They still have to be careful though, because they know Batrider, as well as the Naga Siren, will be controlling them. The VS will be saving people with the swap. The Razor will be holding people out with the Plaza Field in conjunction with the Acid Spray from the Alchemist. And if they do go high ground, they're still dealing with the AoE stuns, the Naga Sleep Control, the Firefly is set up before they even begin the fight. And until all their BKBs are up and running, they won't feel really confident enough to do so. And they've only got one on the Death Prophet and one on, on, uh, on the Lashrak. And that means they get isolated. The Timber Sword becomes useless. Like, he's going into a site of the Vice. So, Alliance's plan must be all... Let's, it's pick off. Like, that's gotta be the plan right now. You find a pick off, and you move on to your next target. And next target should be the high ground. So, smoke timing. Okay, there's a lot of pings coming up from that. Yeah! Admiral Bulldog attacked the ward. He realized at that point with the jam... They, they could see the ward, but they still smoked. So, there's no secret in this smoke at all. 
but they do the right thing. The lanes are slightly pushed out. Chill the Naga Illusions are pushing towards the tier 2 tower, but they need to go high ground take a race. They cannot stall this up. So, the tier 3 tower are going to get beaten down. The fortification will slow it down, but there's still a level 3 exorcism. And you have an Aegis the Immortal on the back of a Death Prophet. Yule stepped her up, just trying to evade that concoction stun. And then back in with the ultimate again. Not to mention the eating damage. They're about to come back off cooldown in a moment. And Naga Sleep caught Chessie, caught Loda. The two BKB heroes. And Loda could turn for this. Looking for the stun. Anyone who jumped in close, but they trigger both the BKBs. Fate in there. The shark comes as well. Bone 7. Took a lot of damage from that, but he took up the drag back while Pardai ended up stunning himself. Fade up. Trying to stand his ground and fight this one. And he does. Loda will drop. Finally, the Ogre Majai Burn will kill off Fader. Three for the price of one. They're back up, the swap up. That one being the Aegis Immortal. A lot of damage coming their way. Misery looking for the extra assumption. He got it over on Envy. And now they jump up again. Abra Bulldog, Chakram number one. Drag it back. Doesn't have mana for Chakram number two. And Ogre Majai has mana for the stuns. They want to keep this push going. A Chessie without an ultimate. And they're still having to go up against Acid Spray. Uh, they, they have enough, they can still go. This is going to be a four star into a stun and get a kill. Pardai is the easiest target. Hex to start with, Admiral Bulldog. The Chakrams go, but the four star from Maui again coming in to save his own teammate. They get the silence on the Arcos, but Loda returns to the engagement with his. Well, he's already got the BTs. The Edict damage will melt through the towers. There's no buy base coming because they just. Well, they, they exist. Razor had it. Now he's short, and he got a money for it, but the buyback's on cooldown. Admiral Bulldog chains away down the hill. The Yule sent her up. It was over on Fader, but they already got managed to get one kill. And the Timber Soul will go down, committing suicide inside the base, dropping his drum gem of true sight inside the Firefly. And the Melee Rex is the one that stayed alive, which is the more important thing. Down to 430 life points. A little Sid Courier from the D2CL. Takes it back. Little Torsky, Torsky, Torsky. Uh, the Agonims is now up for the Ogre Majai. Still not level 16 yet, but it does add that unrefined Fire Blast ability. Nice, good damage. A lot of mana though. A lot, a lot of mana to use that thing. Might consider a Yule Scepter of his own at this point. So Roshan potential spawn time in just under two minutes. Now a fresh gem being purchased up by Alliance into the hands of Misery. Taking it for his team and realizing he has to get rid of the vision for Cloud9. In a way though, Cloud9 will always have that vision as uh, they have Naga on the field. So she's split pushing everywhere. And with the smoke movement up, they find Admiral Bulldog and Arcade. Arcade the first one to get controlled, and Admiral Bulldog just leaves his teammate for dead. He realized he couldn't help him there. The smoke gank with four heroes behind it and the last two being committed. There was no more joy to come from it. <laughs> How much was used? <laughs> Looks like bottom lane, they ended up catching at Envy. Big pick off as well if they can take him, and they can. Oh, Morris, yes! Lotus BKB will make sure that pa that Pulse Nova is still able to do its work. Look at the size of that Lashrac! Ah, uh, now he goes mini. Oh, does he? No, he's he's his bloodlust and BKB'd. <laughs> Andre looks so damn big. It's like we're playing DK mode Mario Kart. Well, the push will come easily. Another Pulse Nova, they want this Millie Rex dead. The Naga's down for the count, she has buyback, even if they force the buyback out from her, it's worth it. Because it's just, it just costs so much. 1100 goldish. And that's the money for the heart, that's why she doesn't want to use it. And it might even be worth letting the Rex go down for it. They can't defend it, the Naga doesn't have sleep, so they let the, they let the Rex go. And the Exism was triggered too. But Envy's got to buy up his heart straight away. Holding on a buyback for the next fight just won't, it won't suffice. He needs to make that Naga as big as he possibly can. Well, Lotus now building into his own Aghanim Scepter, has the cash for it if he wants to buy it. We'll sacrifice his own buyback for it. But right now, I'm not going to say it feels like an all-in for them. Because you are still the racks up for Alliance. So holding on a buyback is a wise thing, but for Cloud9, 
Like the Naga, the Naga split push is what saves it for them. They're checking for Roshan. He's just got over another minute before he'll spawn up. So Cloud9, no joy there. They'll have to go into the Radiant Jungle searching for a kill. And Alliance are moving as five. Misery is the high ground. And Fader walks into him, which means stun. BKB already up from Fader. Can start the static link, the lasso. And she's separating Chessie from the rest of the team. So Chessie is going to go down. A great pick up by Bone7. And they're looking for more. Naga Sleep trying to cancel any TPs. RK was considering it. And they got Loda and RK there. Admiral Bulldog sitting close by as well. He wants to help out his teammates. The BKBs will trigger. And the Lich holding, bouncing around inside the fight. But the damage output seems to be enough for Elias to repel them. That Pulse Nova trying to get closer towards uh, towards Fader with the swap out from Howie. Sacrificing himself for the greater good of his teammate. Razor will be a TP out for safety. So a two for two, and with the trade off the tower still being fairly well pressured. And the overall advantage, I don't want to say even. I don't want to say even at all. But compared to the damage output done from Alliance, the amount of kills, seeing just how efficient this, this damage is, now how quick that damage is. It's eternal envy. Now it goes back to his split pushing thing. With no death profit. And the timber saw currently uh well he's still regenerating. Ten bloodstone charges on him. We actually have gotta keep tapping that too. Nine bloodstone charges over on Loader. So these things haven't well, Loader's dropped below eight at one point. Because he sacrificed very early on. Now he will be sacrificed. Blink, lasso, and then turn it on. Dragon back. Envy with the ensnare. Loader does have his BKB. But just Pulse Nova's down most of the creep wave that's there. He can't catch up to anybody. Bone 7 as, as well as Envy are already out of there. They ran out of mana, which is probably a primary reason why they backed up. Not to mention they don't have to stick around. Fade is farming up that bottom lane now up to 3.2k gold over on him, 45 minutes in. Double damage! Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. All right. Looks like we're into the fight already. Yep. Well, it's time to come back. Smack bang in the middle of it. Loader standing in his BKB. The Shark was trying to control on Cloud9. The Ogre Magi is already on the sideline. And Howie, where's that tip chain up? He's going for Bone 7. And he got him too. There's gems all over the deck. And Howie, he's searching for the openings. The Wave of Terror trying to give vision. Loader, Chessie, Bulldog. They're all trying to get themselves away to safety. As now they can turn. Tipper chain up, now he hangs up, Envy, there's no sleep available, Admiral Bullock now with a double kill, chains up for the part, Aye! The double stun, the Lich Hunter will now start bouncing around though, Fader, Envy, the Ghost starts splitting up, the Illusions, Envy's still gonna carry it down, they're searching for Pylai Die, one Chakram, two Chakram, wah, 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 and Pylai Die, another short stun, but he's silenced up for now. And he will go down to Admiral Bulldog, up to 13 Bloodstone charges, 10 to 9 on the board for him. And we'll have a buyback coming up from the Alchemist. Now we can show the team fight recap. I thought it was a little bit too premature before. An alliance gonna try and take Roshan. There's no bat rider, eight seconds on him. How quick can they be with no exorcism? Actually, not that quick. The shark rooms are down. There's your medallion going to work. But they're coming over. The TP is out into Firefly. They don't have time. The Naga sleep. Alliance is a disastrous position for them. But where's the follow-up? They still need to hold off. They kill off the courier for now. The BKBs will trigger. Admiral Borlog staying up on top of the cliff. They have to drag him back down again, all the way over the far side in order to bring him down on top of the agent. He's still just too damn tanky. 16 charges in the armor. Misery is from a fight with his charges. The buybacks can come up from the Naga Siren. Cloud9 will successfully defend Misery, getting nuked down by Fader. The swap away by Owie. Fader up on top with the cliffside, and Chessie, he can't reach him. Now he can. 
The vision's there. Alba Bulldog comes in. Alley trying to get up close to personal time with Roshan. And Roshan, well, doesn't kill him. Chessie's ultimate will do the work instead. But Envy is still here with the illusions. Chasing and burning Chessie. The Exorcism's about to be worn off, though. And that means the regeneration will kick in. Admiral Bulldog, Timber Chains through Envy. How much damage does he really have? Not a lot, but the Yule Scepter buys the space to Eternal Envy. Cannot chase into Admiral Bulldog. And Envy, oh, he wants to go back in. The illusions can tank up Roshan. But they can't attack directly towards him. But that may, may be all they really need. And the double by base coming in. All of Cloud9 sacrificing themselves for the greater good. Definitely a huge advantage coming the way of Alliance from that engagement. But it all counts for naught if they can't claim Roshan right now because that's the extra ticket for Cloud9 to go for a big ass push. They Naga sleep against Roshan anyone's nearby. Chessie is the closest one. But they have the Aegis Immortal and they have the Cheese. The Cheese into Fader and the Aegis into Envy. And they just Yule set for up a couple of the illusions. Loader having a play with Fader. The top lane did push into the tier 3 tower. Ah, minimal damage. Not really that much to write home about. And things overall, remaining still the play of Alliance. And I'm not feeling that this game is in the bag. Cloud9 can hold the line for a very, very long time with this lineup. And with a refresher orb almost completed up by Fader, having the double eye of the storm in the middle of the engagement, not to mention what is now a five second BKB. Another thing we should also note is the fact the BKB, the load time used to be four seconds, now is five seconds with the refresher orb. It, it may not seem like much, but you get an extra two seconds of immunity coming into the later portion of the game when you have refresher orb builds. Like Chessie's having some fun times on top lane. What's Naga going next? Still walking around with his casual en energy booster. <laughs> it's been there for a while. What is it going to be? Butterfly? Do we go Diffuser Blade? I'm even wondering if, if the level 2 Diffuser Blade might be a better choice in this game. Burning off that mana of the Latrac. I know they've, like, there's a lot of Bloodstone charges up right now. Oh, your physical damage. Once they run out of the magical damage, the physical damage won't be able to connect. Because there's no MKP here is on this. And I say that though, you got a Death Prophet Ultimate. But if they bring down the Death Prophet, then Nark is fine. And here is like Oka Majai as well as well as Latrak. They'll always be using abilities. Even Lich will be using abilities to get rid of these illusions. Every single time. They will have to spam. But we'll see what Envy wants to do at the end of the day. He's picked up something in the uh, that's that's Fader's refresher Rob. He will be farming up that bottom lane. 3,000 gold on him. If he wants to just sell that, that energy booster, he can. And then just grab himself uh, an Eagle Song. What do we got? That's just a ring of health. You, you need a little bit more than that, Fader. He's close. He just needs one camp. He's speaking out saying, can I, can I just take this one camp? It's, gonna, it's freshly going to spawn. Haste! To get that refresher, unless he wants to sell the cheese, but hardly that bad. Ah, oh, bounty rune. Oh, ancients, that'll work. Alliance coming in through top now. So five heroes gonna look for the opening. Pine Eye Acid Spray is gonna be the is the defense job. He's also walking around with the uh, the new item that Crimson Guards had that for the last 10-20 minutes now. Trying to work into his BKB for the moment, and it is actually gonna be the Diffusal Blade. Just wondering about that. Now Lasso dragging Chessie. Oh, but he's actually up in the tier 4 towers. That great distance. They forced him in so far. Yule Scepter up. The Naga Sleep were you trying to ice him because he triggered his own BKB. And now Admiral Bulldog, Loader, and Arke. A real time position. Fader. Now he'll use his refresh drop. They got Admiral Bulldog stunned up halfway through. Misery will tease himself out of stage, but Admiral Bulldog will go down. 887 gold. Claim the way of the raids for ending the godlike streak. And probably a little bit more low to the swap will cancel out the TP. He's trying to come in and force the issue. And now, man moding with the Pulse Nova. And what a man going up against Pylai Die. The four star from Maui being used to get loaded further away so then they can kite him up and just control him. 31 to 26. Huge amounts of deaths. But the experience chain really kicking up there for Cloud9. Gold as well as negative, kicking in for Alliance. 
everything Cloud9 had, they basically used. And now they can look to force down the middle lane. The Shark Rooms are trying to hold him out for now. Where's Admiral Baldock? He, okay, his regeneration's enough. He just leaves one behind. The dragon back one by one. The turtle methods of alliance are actually really strong with the double Shark Rooms. But Cloud9, they're going to try and have another opening. Bone 7. Proves why, why teams are still bending out this Batrider. That initiation from him has really put Cloud9 in the position they are now. And they're going to try and go for this counter racks. Remember, they are still down to racks on the bottom lane. There's no fortification for Alliance. By backwise, they can do it on the track, but they forced up in. And it's a four time multi cast stun over on Fader. The Crimson Guard will be triggered in Envy. Latrak is still five seconds away. Uh, I think he's... What was he worried about? Radiant now he's actually in a lot of trouble. He's used the Song of the Siren. And Admiral Bulldog chased him out. Got the Hex on Envy. Sharkrim 1, Sharkrim 2. Chessy going to look for the following up silence. Misery needs to get in range for the stun. Now Batrider lasses an Admiral Bulldog. But Misery gets his stun over on Eternal Envy. He's the primary target at the moment. Admiral Bulldog chains back down again. They need to bring down Envy. There goes your ultimate Misery. The Fusion Blade charge. Envy, he's trying to get close enough to finish him. Can't do so. The 58 life points out of the almost 2.1k of Vogue and Vajai keep him alive. The Lich did go down, but the mid push is now on the way for Alliance. They want to counter Rax. The Exorcism will not last long enough. And the bottom three wave hasn't come in far enough, but then again, you got Edict and Exorcism. Fortification must be used by Cloud9. Buyback available for the Nagasarum, but it'll only use it when the rest of Cloud9 are ready to fight. And Pydai is prepping. Expect the buyback now. The concoction comes off. The Hex over on Fader. Maybe they can defend this. It is a range, Rax. Was the only thing Alliance were bringing down. And Loader, he comes in again. He eats a trigger, and he just gets bigger and bigger. The multicast. Four points up in it. Now Batrider. Lasso against against Chessy. How many times must Chessy get picked off? The concoction stun will come in. 87 seconds on the sideline for the for the Death Prophet. Misery will TV out. But that's a huge kill coming their way. There's only the one kill. But it buys so much space. The Death Prophet, no buyback. Short by 140 gold. Roshan's still down for a while. McLeod 9. They try and go for another jump in. They go for another push. They're taking down the tier 3 tower in mid. But Alliance have shown they know how to defend that one. And with full buyback still available, they should be able to hold their racks. Cloud9 are coming. They want, if, even if they have to force it. They don't, they don't know they, that the buyback's on cooldown. I mean, they don't know that the uh, Death Prophet should have money. So they push this and go, well, where's that buyback? Is it, is it going to happen? Nope. Hard Eye keeps the deep acid spray over the top of that melee racks. And now the last, so they go again. This time it's Admiral Bulldog. Concoction being held on to. They need to bring him down right now. And they've got him. Admiral Bulldog, 44 seconds. Buyback is available. And Fader with a double eye of the storm. They bring down the range Rex only though with that. And actually wasn't a double, it's just a singular. He has his BKB back of cooldown. The swap over on Loda. The blink taken from Alley trying to be used to catch him off guard by that. And Loda! Envy came in so close. Fader, he's getting multicasted up. But the fight will still keep going. The Naga sleep. Being used as a way out, Fade out his BKB. They forced the buybacks, is what they were searching for. Owie, Blink Dagger, now off cooldown. Doesn't have a TP scroll. Envy needs to live, Radiant and he will do so. The Blink up by Owie, four stops on cooldown. Three seconds, but Admiral Bulldog not get this kill over on him. It looks like at the same time, the Alchemist will die a little bit further down. Loader and Chessy catching up to him. And the Bat Rider, well, at least he's mopping up the top creep wave. There's only the range racks which Cloud9 were able to get. Wasn't what they were searching for. They wanted more than that. More speaker too. Uh, Roshan's not up just yet. But he's up in 45 seconds. Double desolation. It's like a used items yard right now inside Roche Pit. And Alliance, they're coming back up the middle lane. They want that melee ranks gone. Then they have the proper lane advantage. Right now it's just this range versus range buff up in the mid. Uh, Multicasting illusions. They have to spam it. The problem is they keep running so low on mana. That's why the Diffuser Blade was, was the uh, the item of choice here. Because here is like, like Ogre, Ogre, Ogre Majai. He just doesn't have a great mana pool. 
And his regeneration is quite poor. And that gives him some true enforced off. His regeneration is nothing. The Naga Illusions just keep coming out, scouting out everything. He can't use Invis for because the Illusions also have gems. So they're doing the de-warding part of it all too. Vader wants to wait at least another 85 seconds before they fight. So he needs the refresher all back up again. That double eye of the storm is perfect, but now Roshan. Uh, that observer was down for the radiant side, so they'll know the second anyone from Cloud9 and Bone 7 gets rid of the ward. Try gets the BKB, and he got out from Bulldog. Drags him. Look how far you can drag him, and how far Alliance have to go to actually catch up to him. Admiral Bulldog's able to chain himself down a little bit further. He can't blink himself away. He's trying to stay in the trees where he's safe. He's over and away, but then Aoi drags him back. The Naga sleep's been used. Roshan, 700 life points. Who gets the bone seven there? Rainy will take it. Death Proper takes the Ego Sea Mortal. Cheese into Loader. Pile I die. No sun available. They'll see the double TPs out, but they can't stun him up on the high ground. He's pinging him out saying, Envy, could you please ensnare? But Envy was too busy trying to catch up to Chessie on the bottom lane. Howie's going to be right behind him. Wave of terror. Chessie's still trying to run this one out. He actually can't outrun Owie. Owie will be there to blink. He doesn't have the swap available, but he can blink. Four star. Ah! He, misery will buy him the space. So he can't actually outrun him. If the swap was off cooldown, he couldn't. Because that range is just too big. But Owie couldn't get there in time. The, re the melee ranks are still alive in mid for, for Cloud9. As we now crack almost an hour into this game. They will not give up the ghost. Veil of Discord now being purchased up for the Ogre Majai. Everyone is six slotted at the moment. The BKB is now being built up by the Alchemist. Another hundred gold away from that, of course, Pylai Dai. He turns himself into a core in this game, primarily because it's, it's Grievel's Greed. You're able to get so much more money into your hero, as long as he doesn't actually get that amount of bonus gold. Uh, you can flood in the money. So he has, he has the items of what a late game carry should have anyway. And just six slot him up. The VS is your primary initiator and sacrificial lamp. Howie 2000 trying to be important. And now we're going to get an assault cuirass over for Fader. 4,000 gold on him and picks up a hyperstone. At least he's going to try and go in for a Mjolnir, but fairly certain right now after the Chief of Scar has already been done he wants to finish up the full AC he can buy it all right now too there's the gems just laying on the deck and he's holding onto his money doesn't value the AC high enough over his buyback I need a little bit more money before he can do that so now in comes Alliance five Fero smoke up they want one person to be picked off we actually have a second bat rider lasso now with another refresher orb arriving in for the Cloud9 lineup. They move to the bottom lane. And the Lions don't find anybody. Not a soul to be found. Cloud9 were all back inside their base, and now they see Alliance moving in the bottom lane. Just over an hour now we've cracked. The advantage swung back the way of Cloud9, but there's still very little in it, including in the experience of staying so close. Any new major items was coming up in the courier? A smoke and, and wars, that's all it is. The attempt at Shiva's got on the way for Admiral Baldock for the casual plate mail for now. Chessy, his BKB is there with 3.1k gold on him. And the only other army might be considering dropping. Well, he doesn't want to drop the Aegis, obviously, because he but can't. But it'll be reclaimed in a moment. He'll need to have something more than, than this. But what do you really get? Do you look for your evasion? Do you look for any kind of buff up? You've already got your two disables through the side of the vice as well as through the Yule Scepter. The Shiva's Guard was the other one, but we might be getting to a point of the game where Shiva's won't be as, as useful. You need another way to push in. I almost say Necro units might actually be a better choice. <laughs> if you're really just going to try and force the lane and take, and take the racks, it may be essential for him. Right now, Alliance still looking for the opening, and Cloud9 aren't giving it to him. They keep holding back. They keep farming up. And right now, Envy has dropped that gem of true sight. He's only got a level one diffusal blade. Well worth the upgrade for the because he's got the cash. So if he's not doing that, it must be for it must be for the butterfly. And that's what he must be building into. He could just buy the second diffusal blade level now, but he's still got charges left. Yeah, he gets the the evasion to start with. 
You can still actually buy the second level, and um, and then still have buyback available. The cash is there for him for that. You might be just a little bit more cautious. Fade up. Well, Discord's being cast on him, but there was no follow-up from Misery. Not fast enough, and these illusions are causing a real problem for Cloud9. I mean, I mean for, for Alliance. The creep wave's getting momentum. They're not, they're not the super size me creeps, which Alliance have fighting for them. Which is why Alliance is still not going to TP back for this. Because they know their meat shields are going to be more than enough to keep that creep wave out. So it's all about the fighting towards the high ground. The Veil of Discord's about to wear off on Fader. He's still sitting there with basically almost a full assault, your ass. <laughs> He's trying to be so calculate, calculating with his, with his money. That rider, jump in, he got Chessie! Again this happens, and again he'll be dragged back! The refresher on the bubble, he's gonna look for a second one. The egg is already gone, Loda, now he'll be back at the tier 4 tower! Phone 7 proves once is not enough, twice is the lucky number. The Naga Sleep's gonna be used here as well, they're just trying to force through the tier 3 tower. It's not even down yet, they've lost two heroes, Misery as well, to take a fall outside the base. Timbersaw looking towards the mid, trying to get rid of the creep wave, stops the double TPs. That was actually probably, I'm not going to say critical. It was Cloud9 trying to get as much momentum down this middle lane as possible, as quick as they possibly could. It actually did make a difference because the creep wave wasn't there and it's not there anymore. So because of that, they can't just ride the creep wave, put the heroes in front and push down the lane. It's not possible anymore. Now Bone7, I mean uh, Admiral Bulldog trying to over, like, just use Sharkums to keep these heroes away. As hard as it may seem right now, the full Assault Kuras is coming out. Envy's quarter staff as well. He's got the money for the full Butterfly, and they'll come high ground. And then they go straight for the GG push, or they actually take the racks. Already, RK being swapped up. The buyback comes out from the strike. Buyback out from the Death Prophet. And Cloud9, the Naga Sleep will be used. Chessy and Admiral Ball, they wait it out. The AC has arrived. They still want this mid racks. The Refresher of Ulti's already been used by Fader, and the last two, they got him again! Jesse! Peace! Matty, peace! No! Fader starts the link up. But his BKB is now back on the cooldown again. No Refresher Orb available. And Alliance will hold on to their melee racks. They did have to use two buybacks, Crawb and Lashrac for that, so the two cores having to buy back. Nice little regeneration rune on Bottom River 2, that'll go to Envy. 1200 worth of mana to regenerate up. And that courier is still holding onto the quarter staff, so he's not buying the full butterfly just yet. The Alliance, they're coming up as quickly as they can. They got Pilot Eye. The Hex, the Chakram chaining off here from Admiral Bulldog. It's not enough control. Not up against an Alchemist. They're still walking around with his own BKB. Starts the concoction. Lorna moves forward, triggers his BKB. But the damage output's a little bit too high for him to deal with. The Lich holding. Now we'll start bouncing, but it doesn't really bounce at all. Loader triggers the cheese to try and stay alive. They come back in again. Chessy, he'll go down. No, he won't. Up and towards the air on a beast of life points. Trying to escape, but they bring him down. Loader, the last two on him. The Naga pops to sleep. Fader, so low on life. He wants to stick around to be part of this, but he knows he can't. The rest of Alliance want to. They force our floater back out to safety. The double shark from keeping a, a, a Howie 2000 away. He's got no mana for a swap, but he'll blink out. No stun, misery, and snared up, controlled. The concoction stun. The bad rider is the man to get the kill. And 66 minutes in, Cloud9. They still hold their melee racks. The only advantage they have is the range down the mid still. And this is just becoming, not even tit for tat, this is just all out brawler. Loader with the invis rune. Where is that gem? Is it over on, yeah, it's over on uh, the alchemist now. <laughs> but that butterfly, it has to come in for envy. The courier is making his way out right now to do so. To give him that invasion now. There's no buyback for the death prophet. Cloud9 are very much aware of this. Buyback for the ogre magi, also not available. They're not aware of that because they're not quite sure how much money he's got. But this will be a mid melee Rax. No fortification available. And all you've got is really Sharkrum defense. And to do that, you put yourself in a position where this guy right here is going to cause you havoc. It's just the last two drag. That's what's won this for Cloud9. I say that, there's a lot of things going towards it. But what's given them that major, major advantage is things like this too. Four staff down, Arcade's in a lot of trouble. There's still 18 seconds until Crop is up, even then her ultimate won't be available. And Loader is down, I think it's a GG. They've lost too many people. Cloud9, 68 minutes in, have all of Alliance down on the sidelines. Timbersaw will fight back. They don't want to give up the ghost. 
Because actually they've got to go for a straight GG push. That's the only way right now Cloud9 can win this. They can't go for the top racks to get Mega Creeps. And might be the reason too why Alliance aren't, aren't willing to call it. But the Tier 4 tower's not down yet. Fader, his Eye of the Storm is wearing off. Misery looking for that opening. He needs somebody. Batrider, no lassoes available. But the Exorcism is now up for Chessie. The Tier 4 towers are dropping. Now the 4 staff up. The Exorcism will be used. Fader, Chakram 1, Chakram 2. With the pullback, a lot of burst damage. They need this guy dead and they got him. The Timber Chain up. He's on the sidelines. Chessie, though, being ensnared up. Eternal Envy. He's out of mana. Pilot Ice trying to stick around to help Mock and Koshi coming off cooldown. Fader will buy back. Back in the engagement. His ultimate's off cooldown in six seconds' time. And Chessie, the Exorcism is wearing off. Is there any power? Is there any fuel left in the tank for Alliance? The Rax is going down. The Fortress is gone. And that is it. It's GG. It's GG. Game number one of our two game series. We'll go the way of Cloud9. Patience was a virtue they have displayed today. And Alliance, they fought hard and they fought to the end. But Cloud9 take the victory in one hour, eight minutes and 25 seconds.